Hi, Mr. Johnson here. Wanted to talk to you parents about some exciting things we have going on here at Edith Bowen, specifically regarding communication and how we can build the Edith Bowen community together. First of all, we have always believed at Edith Bowen that we want to be excellent. We want to be like Wayne Gretzky describes, a great hockey player who goes where the puck is going to be. Now, our traditional communication systems have been the backpack system, where we throw things in the backpack, we hope that they arrive home, and we hope that you find them. Of course, we know from experience that tradition and reality often are different. And the reality of it is, is that you often find out about things only when you unpack the backpack at Christmas time and in June when you have to clean things out and you find all of these fabulous notices of things that are going on at the school or information that was sent home that you never received because it gets lost in the traditional uh, communication system. And we figure that technology can help us out. We figure technology is a great thing, but sometimes it can be just as confusing as this desk shows. Of course, when we were kids, as Jeremy's father uh, said, we didn't have as many distractions, no only three television networks, no internet, no iPods, nor cell phones to compete for our attention. Life was simpler and easier to comprehend. And of course, Jeremy, being the teenager he is, knows that that explains a lot. And of course, Mom is just dazed and confused. But we realize that there is a lot of ways that we can communicate with technology. So we've kind of taken a look at the gambit of technology that's out there, what we could use, and narrowed it down to what we ought to be using to improve communication between home and school. And we've narrowed this communication down really into a couple different areas. Now first of all, we don't want the communication to be like Jeremy's. You know, we don't want to use 2 billion cell phones, 8,000 satellites, and trillions of signals only to tell you what's up. But we do want to use technology to make communication more effective and make it customized. We want you to be able to get the information that you want and is important to you and get it how you want it. Now customization means different things for different people. Facebook to you might mean a great website or it might mean you getting in your face, in your face into a book at night. So we hope that you'll choose and pick the ones that are important to you. Now the first level of communication that we know has to be the vital information. The most important emergency stuff that we have just got to make sure that it gets to you. So we will still be using the US Postal Service to make those mailings that we need to have in your hands. The registration packets, the important forms and documents. And of course we'll also be using a phone system. The phone system is called School Reach. It allows us to basically record a quick message and have it bulk phone all of you at the same time. This is going to be really important in case of an emergency, um, a natural disaster or something where we need to get information to all the parents, parents in an immediate way. So it's going to be really important that we have your correct phone number and correct address so we can get this vital information out to you. However, most of the information that we send out fits in this general information category. And this is the type of information that in the past that we've sent out through the website. We post it online. It's also the information that generally you've seen come home in the backpacks. We're still going to continue to use those sources of information, but we're going to add a little twist to our email system. In the past we've used a bulk emailing system through school reach. But we found that we often don't have your right email address. So we're going to use one called SIMPA that allows you to sign up whatever email addresses you would like to get information at. There's a separate video on the Edith Bowen YouTube channel that will show you how you can sign up the email addresses you want to receive any bulk email information. This would be the general information announcements, happenings of what's going on at the school. In addition to these somewhat traditional methods of, commun methods of communication, we've also created a Facebook page for Edith Bowen and a Twitter feed for Edith Bowen. So those of you using Facebook and Twitter can keep track of what's going on at the school through those communication tools. We also thought it was important that we post some photographs with your permission and using appropriate safety measures so that you can share in the Edith Bowen experience even when you're not there. And we're using a website called Flickr to do that. And then of course you're watching this video on the Edith Bowen YouTube channel. And for student videos that students need to watch at school if we produce some, 
we block YouTube because it does have questionable content on it, but we'll be posting any videos that students may need to see on a, a website called TeacherTube, which is an educational version of YouTube in essence. So these are the websites that you can get general information from. Some of them might be a website, some of them may be the backpack, you may choose to do email, you may be a big Facebook fan and choose to do that. We want you to be able to choose which one of these channels you're getting information about general events and happenings at the school through. Now the last type of communication, oh I completely forgot to mention this, on all of our social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, Flickr, YouTube, TeacherTube, our handle is EBLSUSU. That is our username and we'll always try to use that username for any type of social media. Now the last type of communication that we like to have is of course that personal communication between you and the teacher, you and the principal, you and the school counselor, you and Vaughn and Rosine in the library. And of course that personal communication will still continue to happen, you know, through email, very good method of getting in touch with us, through the postal service when we need to send information home. Often that's what Vaughn and Rosine do with library information. And of course through the traditional phone method. Those traditional methods work really good for personal communication and we'll continue to use those. But of course when we talk about that personal communication you're going to be getting just personal information not necessarily the general information like we showed you on the previous page. Now a key component to getting the right information to you is having the right information about you. We use a piece of software called SIS 2010 it's a database program developed by the State Office of Education in the state of Utah that allows us to store information about you, including your address, your phone number, your email, uh, your emergency contact information, and any other information that we need in order to communicate effectively with you. In the past, all of that information has been typed in by Susan down at the main office, and anytime there's been a change, Susan will type that in. Unfortunately, she has to type that in three different places, and often we don't even know that we have the incorrect email or phone number or information until the end of the year when people hear that they've been missing out on information and they realize that the phone number we have is incorrect or we have the incorrect email. So we'll be posting after Thanksgiving information on how you can log into SIS and check your own information for you and your child to make sure we have the correct information and it even gives you the options to update information that's in our SIS system. You'll need to create a login and then you'll need to go in and double check that information. We'll post how to do that right after Thanksgiving when that system gets fully functional and set up to make sure that it works right for you. Another uh, frustration has been lunch money. We know you send it in envelopes, it gets lost in the backpack, it gets tucked you know, in the locker and not turned in. So we're happy to announce that we're also implementing an online payment system. So you can go online, create a user account, and pay lunch money and be assured that it's been, uh, it's been credited to your student's lunch account. Once again, I'll have more information about that after Thanksgiving, and we'll post that on the website and send you an email about it. So with all of the stuff that we've just told you, sometimes we worry about online safety. We know that's a big concern. We want to keep our students safe, and we would like to let you know that we'd like to have an Internet Safety Night in January, where we'll have experts coming in talking about how do we protect our students from online predators what is cyberbullying and what does it involve, uh, when's the right age for a Facebook account, when do we let students use Twitter, all of these questions about keeping our children safe, we'll have a separate night dealing just with that. Uh, specific safety issues regarding your personal information is that the SIS system where we store all of your information is protected by the state of Utah and they do a fabulous job of protecting data that's in that system. And then the only other thing we've really talked about here in this presentation has been Flickr online photos. You might worry about us posting online photos. We want you to know that first of all, we will not post any online photo unless you have given us permission. So there is an internet publishing form that many of you have filled out online that have told us what information is okay to share online, photos, student work, those type of things. If you haven't filled that out, we encourage you to go to the Edith Bowen page and you'll see it as a 
uh, tab in the left hand and we want you to fill that out and if you're not comfortable having your students photo posted online we will respect those wishes and not post it. The second thing you need to know is any photos that we post online we do not associate any personal information with. We want to keep our students safe. But we also want you to know that we feel that there's great value in having those photos out there. We posted photos of the Teton Science School experience for our fifth grade while we were up there and found it to be an invaluable tool for parents on finding out what was going on and being comfortable about the experience their students were having. So now we talk about, with all this information, what is it really that you need to do? So I've got a little to-do list here for you. First of all, you need to sign up for an SIS account. Information about how to do this will be posted after Thanksgiving on the Edith Bowen webpage. After you get your SIS account, we need you to double check the contact information in SIS. Make sure that all the information is up to date. Add any information that you would like added so we can be able to contact you as needed. Again, information after Thanksgiving on how to do this. Next thing we need you to do, if you haven't already, we need you to fill out the internet publishing form indicating your permission or non-permission for posting photographs, student work, and other things related to your student online at Edith Bowen. There's a link already on the Edith Bowen website. It's on the left hand side. It's called Parent AUP. And then the last thing is decide as a family how you would like to receive that general information. Would you like to receive it via email? If so, sign up. Or would you like Flickr? Or would you like to receive it just by the traditional way that has been happening in the past through the backpack? We leave that up to you on how you want to receive that general information. You're welcome to use as many or as few of those ways as possible. So at this point in the conversation, we'd usually take questions, commentary, but yeah, we're on YouTube. We can't do that. So maybe we'll just say, hey, why don't you go to the Edith Bowen website, check out some of these new communication tools, check out some of the other videos we have posted on YouTube, and decide how you as a parent can get communication that you want and how we can build our community together.